So a warm welcome to you this morning. If you're comfortable to do so, please stand. So you're welcome to our service of Holy Communion uh, as we continue to celebrate Epiphany season, which is part of the Christmas season. Uh, we move today into um, a four-week-long series looking at the book of Ruth. So that's what we'll be looking at this morning. And so the light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. We continue to worship as we sing.
So loving God, we do proclaim that, that all are welcome in this place. Uh, may we as your people uh, bring blessing to the places where we go and offer blessing to those who come among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. Uh, so we have our January notices. Um, a lot of you will have received these by email, but please do uh, pick them up on the table at the front um, if you haven't received them by email and would, uh, would like them. Um, just a couple of uh, things to draw to your attention. Um, next week on uh, Saturday, we have one of our uh, prayer meetings, which is here from 11, between 11 and 12. It's quite informal. Um, we have a couple of prayer stations uh, and we have sort of half an hour where you have your own kind of individual prayer and then we come together and we pray. Uh, so please do come along to that. Um, we have a celebration of faith service. This is um, <laughs> a lot of notice. It's on the 28th of April and Bishop Lusa will be coming. Uh, Justin is going to be confirmed on that date, so um, that's really lovely, and Holy Trinity will join us as well. Um, <clears throat> but if you haven't been confirmed and you would like to be confirmed, or you know someone who would like to be baptised, uh, do come and talk to me about that. So we bring ourselves as ever more and more intentionally to open our hearts and minds to God. And so we pray together. God of our days, nearly. we have a new computer. So <clears throat> it, it, is, it is all working, but it just takes a moment to get used to something new. <laughs> so it starts, God of our days and years. There we go. Ooh, it's too quick, you see. There we go. Okay, we say together God of our days and years. We set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so in light of the grace poured out upon us, if you're comfortable to do so, please stand as we sing of God's glory.
So please do be seated. Um, we have our reading. We have only one reading today because, as I said at the beginning, we're looking at the book of Ruth. Uh, so we're going to take a chapter um, each week, and it's quite long. So if you're sitting comfortably, Pam will begin. If you wish to follow the reading, it's opposite page 266 in the Pew Bible. So reading from chapter 1 of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Emelech, his wife's name was Naomi and the names of his two sons were Marlon and Kilion. They were Ephraites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Emelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moab women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Marlon and Kilion also died. And Noemi was left with her two sons and her husband. When Noemi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of the people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back to your people. But Noemi said, Return home, my daughters, Why would you come with me? Am I going to have more sons? Who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud. Then Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where will you go? And where will you stay? Your people will be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. 
When Noemi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law. Arriving in Bethlehem, as the barley harvest was beginning. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Wonderful. So loving God, thank you for this uh, story among us. May it take root in our hearts and may we learn what you have to say to us this morning uh, as we go into our day and our week with you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, as I've said, we're starting four weeks looking at this book of Ruth. Um, and there's so much to love about the book of Ruth in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. Um, a woman that I once worked with told me that her mother-in-law, um, who was addicted to Mills and Boone, uh, the romances um, of Barbara Cartland, uh, uh, sort of, yes, reputation. Um, if she didn't have one of those to hand, then she would pick up her Bible and Ruth would be the story that she went to. And I thought, what a wonderful, this woman knew her Bible so well that she knew uh, the romance that was involved in the story of Ruth. So Ruth is a romantic story, but it's also, it's an adventurous story. It's, a sto it's one of those books of the Bible that seems to stand alone. You know, it's a bit like Esther. You feel like you can just read that all in one go. It's short. You could go home after church and read it now so you know what's coming um, in the story. But I also love this chapter that we've read today there's a twist, um, and I love, this is, this is better storytelling than Mills and Boone, anything that Barbara Cartland could uh, offer us. So I love that twist that happens in this first chapter. It starts with a certain man of Bethlehem, and we hear about Elimelech and his wife and his two sons. So we begin with the usual landscape. There was a certain man. I don't know if any of you are watching The Traitors at the moment. I know a lot of you won't be, but some of you will be. And if you've caught up, I don't want to give any spoilers, um, but there was a moment where um, the traitors were recruiting someone to their posse. Um, and they recruited another man. They hadn't recruited any women. And Claudia, who is presenting it, said, oh, another man. It's like the olden days. Um, <laughs> and um, it tickled me. And this is like this, you know, in the Bible, there was a certain man. Okay. We know this story. It's what we've heard before. Elimelech is the main event of this story. There is famine in the land. And the man takes his family to a foreign and strange place. Now, this might be ringing some bells with you. I don't know. I'm going to jog your memory in a, in a minute. Um, because this story is a pattern of the foundational stories of the people of God. So we hear in Genesis 12, verse 10. Now, there was a famine in the land. 
So Abraham went down to Egypt to reside there as an alien, for the famine was severe in the land. And then we hear in Genesis 26, verse 1, now there was a famine in the land. Besides the former famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham, just so you know, it's a different famine. And Isaac went to Gerar, to King Abimelech of the Philistines. And then in Genesis 40, verses 1 and 2, when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you keep looking at one another? I have heard, he said, that there is grain in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there that we may live and not die. So the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all find themselves in a strange land because of famine. It is part of the story of the people of God. We will go to strange lands and how will we behave when we settle there? Will we bring a blessing or a curse? Will we receive a blessing or a curse? Abraham brings a curse on Egypt. Isaac and Jacob both find blessing. One of the uh, texts of scripture, which I suggested a couple of weeks ago as a good one to remember for the beginning of our year together here, when we celebrated uh, the day of Epiphany, was from the prophet Jeremiah, who spoke to the people of God whilst they were in exile. And he said, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. The challenge is to recognize the place where we are as a place where God may be present. Regardless of the fact whether it's a place that we've gone into, that we've fleed from somewhere where we haven't wanted to go there, regardless of whether it's a geographical place or a place in the story of your life where you have found yourself, this may be a place, this will be a place where God is present and where we may bring a blessing into that place or a curse. As people of God, it is our call as far as it lies with us that we bless the communities of which we are a part. The irony about the curse that Abraham goes on to bring upon Egypt is that immediately before his journey to Egypt, Abraham receives his call from God, and it says this, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. And then he goes on to be a curse in Egypt. But you'll have to read that story in Genesis 12 yourself. So the story of Elimelech, although it is, as I said, one of those books that you can feel like you can take it out and just read it, um, as my friend's mother-in-law did, um, it is, in fact, immediately by saying these things, there was a famine in the land and a certain man went to a strange country. It's immediately placing itself in a familiar and honored tradition within the scriptures. So far, so familiar, yada, yada. There was a man, there was a famine, there was a journey to a strange land. And then, just in case you don't know, that's EastEnders, there's, there's a few references to to these things, but it's a good way of 
telling you something is happening in the story comes at the end of the EastEnders cliffhangers. Elimelech dies in verse 3. We haven't even got out of the starting blocks of this story and the main character dies. There was a certain man. That's how the story is meant to go. Well, I suppose the sons will step into the gap. That's what then normally happens. But nope. Verse 5, they are gone too. The writer knows how to turn a story. Um, and as I said, this writing is better than any Barbara Cartland. Sorry. We have been sucked in to that story. As we begin to settle into the familiar story, a certain man, a famine, a strange land, we are then immediately sucker punched by the reality that the main character is dead and the usual co-leads are dead. And now we discover why the women are named. Everyone gets a name in this story. It's not like the olden days, except it is. Women are very often not named in scripture because it's a man's world. So as we read these names, it might have been a clue uh, that this story was going to have women at the heart of it. Naomi, Ruth and Orpah a woman and her two daughters-in-law. And so the story takes a turn. Naomi has heard that her land is no longer in famine and she wants to return. There's nothing for her any longer in Moab and she wants to go home where maybe there, there will be some comfort at least there will at least be food. She brings her daughters-in-law with her initially, and it doesn't say why she then reconsiders this and releases them to remain in their own homeland. I wonder if she considered what it would be like for them to be aliens in a strange land. She traveled with her family to Moab, at least she had them. She went there to a strange land. She received food. It was a place of blessing initially. And then maybe she was wondering how will it be for her daughters-in-law as they come to a strange land? How will they be treated? In the end, Orpah is convinced to remain in Moab. It's absolutely fine. But Ruth has taken Naomi to her heart. Perhaps she has no family of her own. We don't know. Where are her uh, parents, her brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles? We don't know her story fully. Perhaps Naomi is all she has. Where the story begins with the familiar story of people of Israel fleeing famine to a strange land, we now have the stranger making her way to the people of Israel and the land of Judah. Will she find blessing or curse? Will the people in the land offer blessing or curse? Will she bring blessing or curse? And as all good chapters of stories end, we find ourselves with a teaser. It says, So Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who came back with her from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. 
And that really is the end of the chapter. It hangs on that story. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. I wonder what the barley harvest will hold for Naomi and Ruth. So the challenge and the comfort perhaps today uh, is whether we are those uh, who in the place where we are bring a blessing or a curse. Do we see God in our present place? Do we offer a blessing to those who come to us from a strange land? Do we find blessing in the places where God has put us? So you'll have to join us next week for the next part of the story, as it says at the beginning of the barley harvest. Amen. Please would you uh, stand if you're comfortable to do so as we proclaim our faith. Please join in with the words in bold. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. Uh, now, we're going to pray um, and after uh, the sections of prayer, I'm going to invite you to come up if you have. Don't worry if you haven't, because I sent out an email in the week um, with some gifts for our food bank uh, box, um, which I've just put here. I'm going to take the lid off. Hang on. I just thought this was a good reminder um, of that story of Ruth, Naomi. Um, as they travel back, are they going to receive a blessing or a curse? And it just made me think about those in our community. Sometimes uh, people who have lived here all their lives, sometimes those who have come from afar but who find themselves um, in particular need. Are we in this community going to offer a blessing? So it's just a simple symbol of that. So. Um, We'll pray, and then I'll ask Robert to play a little bit of music. And if you want to come, if you've brought something, we can place it in the box as a symbol of our commitment as a community here to be those who offer blessing. 
So after each section of prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, please would you respond, hear our prayer. So loving God, as we are reminded about the story of Naomi and Ruth, we ask that you help us to be a blessing and not a curse to the communities of which we are a part. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, Naomi suffered great loss in her life. Please be with those who are bereaved. Be a comfort to those who grieve and where we can be an answer to one another's prayers. Give us compassion to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, Ruth travelled to a new land, a place of uncertain welcome. Help those who are migrants, whether through choice or fleeing violence and war. May we be those who welcome the alien in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, Naomi experienced famine and lack of security in her homeland. We pray for the wars that are going on in our world. And particularly, we continue to pray for Ukraine and Israel-Palestine. Bring your spirit of peace to those places and miracles where we lack imagination for a way forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the agencies who try to provide for those in our midst who feel like strangers, who are marginalized and feel unloved. We particularly think of the food bank, street pastors and firm foundation. Bless those who take what we offer today as a small token of our commitment to be those who bring blessing to the alien in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Robert's just going to play some music in the background. And if you have anything to bring uh, to our food bank box, now is your moment. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, and just a reminder that the box is always there out by the pigeonholes. There's a, a list on which kind of says uh, what people need at this point as that changes throughout the year. 
So loving God, we thank you for uh, these gifts. We do pray a blessing upon those who, uh, who need them, who come and take them from the food bank. And we ask that you help us always to be those who are thinking what it is that we do amongst our community to be a blessing in the place where you have put us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. And so if you're comfortable to do so, please stand as we share Christ's peace with one another. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace.
So come to the feast, there is room at the table with the king of all kindness who welcomes us in with the power of love and the wonder of grace. You are all welcome at this table. Please do come and receive uh, bread and wine or simply bread if you prefer or a prayer of blessing. If you prefer a prayer of blessing, just keep your hands down as you come up and then I'll know. So Lord, accept your people's gifts, not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. Please do be seated. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy, hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, Bring us to light and life. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always.
Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We say together, God our Father, whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem. May the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory Get there, it's all right. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and praise to God. And so do join in our final song. Mm -hmm. 